Okay, so good morning. We will continue with our radiology club today. First, we'll start with Dr. Saad. Good morning. Uh, radiology sign, uh, humming bear sign or penguin sign. The humming bear sign refers to atrophy of uh, midbrain tegmentum with uh, a relatively preserved bones, uh, which is seen on a uh, mid-sagittal attenuated image. Look into the uh, cr uh, axial uh, cross-section uh, anatomy of the uh, midbrain. Uh, there is a cerebral aqueduct uh, which connects between the uh, connects the third to uh, fourth ventricle uh, and uh, dividing the uh, midbrain into uh, two parts. The uh, posterior uh, part is called the uh, tectum. Uh, which is formed by uh, two pairs of uh, colliculi, and the superior one, which is uh, 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 related to the uh, visual reflexes, and the uh, inferior colliculus, uh, which is uh, concerned with the auditory reflex. Uh, anterior to the uh, aqueduct, there is uh, tegmentum, uh, which is divided to uh, three. So what is the tectum here? Go back to the image. Yes. Where is the tectum? This is tectum. Everything that is posterior, posterior to the to aqueduct the of Serbia. Yes, yes. And uh, anterior to the aqueduct, uh, there is a uh, tegmentum, which is uh, uh, composed of uh, three uh, different uh, color parts, uh, the uh, red nucleus, which is uh, um, concerned with uh, uh, motors, uh, motor sensory uh, uh, information uh, coordination. Also, uh, substantia nigra, uh, which contain uh, melanin, uh, and uh, it's responsible for the uh, synthesis of the. Nigra is black. Yes, it's black. So, substantia nigra is black substance. Black substance. Okay. Yes. Because it contains melanin. Melanin. Okay. Yeah. So, you have red, black, and yellow. What's the red, yeah. the yellow one? The yellow is the uh, periaqueductal gray matter, uh, which okay. is uh, responsible for the. Pen separation. <coughs> the, the, the gray is the periaqueductal gray matter. Yes. The yellow is the spinal thalamic tract and the medial meniscus. meniscus okay? Yes. So you have basically the colored parts are three the black, substantia nigra, because it contains melanin, the red, the red, the red nucleus, red because nucleus it contains iron. iron. Yes. And the gray, so periaqueductal gray, gray matter. Yes. 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 Gray matter. Okay? Yes. So you have a lot of colors there. So also we have the uh, oculomotor and the trochlear uh, nervous, uh, the cranial nerves that arising from the midbrain, uh, which is responsible for the uh, uh, movement of the eye and the innervation of the muscle surrounding the eyeball okay. uh, and the uh, size of the pupil with the uh, lens uh, shape. The humming bear sign is an uh, interesting radiological sign seen in patients with the progressive uh, supranuclear palsy, PSP. It's a neurodegenerative uh, condition, gradually progressive disorder. Uh, the onset is at the age of uh, 40 years and above. Uh, vertical, uh, uh, the clinically, there is the vertical uh, gas palsy, gait disorders, and uh, postural inst instability uh, uh, mean uh, fall, uh, the patient will fall, uh, and uh, uh, dysarthria, dysphagia, rigidity, and frontal cognitive disturbance. So first of all, it, when you see humming bird sign, the penguin sign, this indicates PSP. <coughs> yes. Okay? Progressive supranuclear pulse. Yes. You don't see it in young age group. The no. sh patient should be more should than be 40 more at least. Yes. Okay? Usually elderly. Mm -hmm. Patient symptoms and in the socially will be, he's an elderly patient, oh, he's Alzheimer. No, he's not Alzheimer, he's progressive superior palsy. Someone who has the difficulty remembering things, difficulty in 
falling, then through walking, difficulty in moving the eye, mm -hmm. things like that. Yes. Uh, it can be helpful in distinguishing uh, PSP from a multisystemic atrophy and Parkinson's disease, in which have no uh, midbrain atrophy, hence they do not uh, show this sign. Uh, the hummingbird sign is useful for uh, establishing the diagnosis of uh, PSP, and it's uh, reported to have a sensitivity of nearly 100 percent. Yes. yes. This is hummingbird shape. Okay. Yes, and this is the axial section. So what is the hummingbird? Show us the hummingbird. Yes. This is a hummingbird, you know. This is the okay. Hummingbird. This, he looks like that. Yes. Also, his name is the penguin. Uh, What's this flower? This is a daisy, a flower. Just. Uh, yes, as a cross section, it appears like this flower. Okay. Yes. And this oh, is it's the called the penguin. Uh, the same name. And this is the feature of the so hummingbird. You can see how it looks the same. Yes. The hummingbird sign, sign of PSP. PSP. You are late. Progressive supranuclear pulse. 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 PSP has a PlayStation. PlayStation program. Yes, I should have it to me. So points to the brain. No, no, I should. Yes, there is a ratio. It is, I think, the diameter of the cerebral. Pedicle should be 12 yes. millimeter or less. Points yes. to the uh, points to the midbrain. Yep. Yeah. Upon 12 to upon. Uh, because uh, yes, because atrophy. reserved it points. Yes. Relatively reserved it. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, next. <laughs> Okay. So, come sit, show us the normal. So, this is the normal image. You can see it here. Just wait a second. This is this is a normal appearance, let's say. Okay? Sorry? No, the cut, the, the cut is a little bit, maybe not very uh, excellent. T2 will be better. But anyway, the thing is, you don't see this beak of the hummingbird or the um, penguin. Okay? You don't see the beak. And you can see here, the pedicle cerebral, it's wide, big. I think the value is more than 12 millimeter in thickness. If it is less, it will be sign of hum in any progressive supranuclear pulse. Okay? Good. Now, Dr. Bihal will present something else, which is, let's see. I have no idea, just like you. I have no idea, too. Uh, she has no idea, too. Good. <laughs> because it was preparing on mobile. I don't know how it's, it's preparing on a computer. It's a really big surprise. No one knows what is it. <laughs> Good morning. The research on management of asymptomatic ovarian and other adnexal cells is made by ultrasound. It is a simple subject, but it's important because there is a wrong follow-up for the patients we see daily. So the target of the subject was asymptomatic non-pregnant adult women, including premenopause and postmenopause, which is a postmenopause early and late postmenopause. And the purpose is to reduce unnecessary imaging and decrease patient anxiety by determining who needs follow-up, who needs no follow-up, who needs surgery. For the imaging of the cyst, of uh, an excel cyst or ovarian cyst, we need transabdominal ultrasound 
transvaginal ultrasound which the all the cysts should be imaged and the color and power doppler the color and power doppler is important in imaging cysts to see if there is a solid component because it may not appear on a grayscale so and that's important to observe the gain and frequency and also the history clinical information about the age last menstrual period hormonal status previous surgery previous imaging and family histories so in general cyst with a benign feature usually have a round or oval thin wall anechoic no solid component no acceptation and usually have a caustic shadowing less than 10 centimeter Acoustic enhancement, sorry. Yeah, yeah, acoustic enhancement. And up to 10 centimeter, and most important, no internal flow within it. Uh, the types of the benign cyst usually simple cyst, paravirant cyst, hemorrhagic cyst, dermoid cyst, endometrioma, hydrosalpanx, and peritoneal inclusion cyst. And those who have intermediate but probably benign usually have a thin septation, calcification in the wall, single calcifications, or have a multiple septation but still thin, or single solid nodule, and as I say, no floor inside the cyst on a color doppler. Those who have worrisome feature for malignancy is six septa more than three, three centimeter, three millimeter solid elements and flow inside the mass. First, we're describing the normal appearance of the ovary in our reproductive age. It contains multiple follicles, one or more mature follicle, which is a thin wall, round or oval, as I said, any coic, size should be less than three centimeter, and no blood flow. There's no need to follow up or even no need to be mentioned. And other normal is the corpus luteum, which is a thick wall, peripheral blood flow, size less than three centimeter, may have internal ego. This also may need, as you like, if you mentioned or not mentioned, it's not important. And normal ovary in postmenopausal, it is homogeneous, small, with no internal follicle. But sometimes may be seen as thin wall cyst, which is less than one centimeter in postmenopausal. So if you see a small cyst in a postmenopausal woman, less than don't one freak centimeter, out. yeah, it's it just yeah. It can be seen, especially in early menopausal. And the type of the cyst, as we mentioned first, is a simple cyst, which is a thin walls and echoic smooth. No solid component, no internal flow. This, according to this research, if it is less than five centimeter, no need to be mentioned. Need to be mentioned, sorry, but no need for up. So you can just ensure the patients, and this is a simple thing, so no need follow up. Well, if it is yeah, less than five centimeter. Less than five centimeter. <laughs> Mention, but yeah, so. You are less sure. Less than five centimeter. You have one of two options. Either just it's a simple cyst, go home, or you can tell her to come back after the next cycle to confirm that it is not changing or decreasing. Yeah. Okay. And if it is between five to seven centimeter, may need only yearly follow up. While in postmenopausal, it's, it is it's the same. Yani one from seven yearly follow up. More than seven, it should be surgical removed or further imaging with MRI. For the hemorrhagic cyst, hemorrhagic cyst had a reticular pattern with internal echo. This is due to fibrin. May have a solid uh, appearance area with a concave margin, no internal flow. In a hemorrhagic cyst, if it is less than five centimeter, also no need follow up. For the five 
more than five centimeter. Yeah, I know it's in controversial and in logic systems that five center home. In general, we're not using this, but other searchers like this. From where this article to this research, which journal? Uh, this was a conference. Yeah, this was conference uh, meeting in Thailand in so 2010. Between the gynecologists, radiologists, pathologists, yeah, all of them. Some different criteria than ours. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, more than five centimeters is six to twelve weeks follow up. In early postmenopausal of any size, follow up should be done. In late menopausal surgical treatment, if of any size. Endometrioma, it is a homogeneous low internal echo, but have no solid component and no flow. At any age, you need to follow up every 6 to 12 weeks. And this can be differentiated from hemorrhagic cysts. If it is r resolved within 6 to 12 weeks, it's mostly hemorrhagic cysts because hemorrhagic cysts usually resolve within 8 weeks. And we have a dermoid. Dermoid have a focal or diffuse hyperechoic content may have a hyperechoic line on dots, area of acoustic shadowing, and no internal flow. This in the dermosis, if surgical is not removed, need follow-up to be done yearly, so it is depend on the patient's symptoms. Hydrosalpanx, another simple thing, which is a tubular-shaped cystic mass, have a sharp round, pro sharp round projections bit on a string or waist sign, from intermediate on the opposite, from indentation of opposite sides. As this on any age need assess patient symptom. If this patient have a symptomatic, should be treated <coughs> or follow up. If I have no symptom, may not need any follow ups. Peritoneal inclusion cyst follow the contour of adjacent structure, and ovary may suspend it within it. Also, this depends on the clinical presentations. Uh, as we say, those would have an intermediate, you cannot decide if that is uh, by ultrasound, is it benign or may go to the malignancy. Those who have, uh, those like a hemorrhagic cyst, endometrioma, or dermoid may have a follow up every 6 to 12 months. Weeks. If it, uh, you know? 6 to 12 weeks follow up. T 12 weeks, yeah. 6 to 12 weeks follow up. If it is resolved, it's mostly hemorrhagic. If it is enlarged or have a, any other symptoms, may go to the surgery. If not change it, you can follow up for, or f by other imaging like MRI. And also those with inter other intermediate characteristic, as we say, thin wall with a calcification in the wall of the cyst is the same as the or multiple septation less than three millimeter of have a single nodule but not non hyper echoic. This need this two need uh, further follow up with the MRI. Malignant feature is a thick septation more than three millimeter, irregular septation, nodule with a blood flow, this goes directly for the surgery. So the summary of this the goal is so if you see a nodule with a blood flow, you are sent immediately to surgery without doing an MRI first? Yeah, you can do further imaging and then surgery. You have to do. Okay. You cannot do surgical removal without proper staging for the tumor, for the enhancement, for right. the metastasis, for the invasion. You have to complete the follow uh, imaging completely and possibly even biopsy, possibly yeah. chemo or radio or whatever, yeah. whatever the oncology think so, and then go for surgery. You uh, can see ultrasound and say yeah. for surgery. One so of the surgery. other points in this research is say that uh, aspiration is not indicated because it is uh, low sensitivity for malignancy detections. So better with imaging, follow up with imaging than surgery. So the summary is the same as we say it was less than five centimeter for the Premenopausal and one centimeter for the postmenopausal completely benign feature, no need follow up. And more than this, need to follow up with the further imaging or then if according to the symptom for the surgery. 
This is the same thing as we mentioned. Thank you. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I think the flow within the cyst or cystic mass is the most important criteria. There is a blood flow, go for removal. If there is no blood flow, you can either follow up or remove according to other features. And according to the lab test and consultation with the gynecologist in charge of the case. So, you see blood flow, do an MRI with contrast and send for surgery. You don't see blood flow, then you have to consult with the patient and with his or gynecologist for further uh, uh, workup according to the case. That's just my opinion. I don't know. Everyone has its own policy. Thank you.